Welcome back to the Mastering Runeterra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Runeterra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Runeterra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Runeterra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Runeterra. Welcome back to the Master Gutera podcast with uh, Jason and Akedo. Um, apparently, I can't get Akedo and Majin to show up to a podcast. We don't know where Majin is for this one. So uh, it's just myself and Akedo. Thank you, though, Akedo, for being here. Hey, I was able to show up this time. I mean, you know, I, I, it felt like, you know, only one of us is allowed to drop the ball like per week. So, you know, I'm glad I'm glad this time it was Majin. You're like cutting. You're cutting in and out for some reason. I don't know why. Wait, am I cutting in and out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're you're back now for me. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it was me. Um, fuck it. We'll keep going. It's gonna be one of those. It's gonna be. It's gonna be one of those shows where we just kind of throw it together. Um, Akito's got more to say though than Manja and I. He plays the game a lot more than we do. Um, so I'm looking forward to to diving into all the LOR things with you. Uh, first up though, I just want to thank all of our subscribers um all of our patrons thank you guys so much we got some really cool stuff coming up for you guys uh got some subscriber patreon only tournaments coming up very soon uh that we'll be announcing and um some other things as well in the in the old bag of tricks um okay let's just jump into it because we've been sitting around you're out here saying that like i'm playing more than you i i i I seem to think that there's somebody in this call that hit rank one in the last week i mean Mm-hmm. I, I was that just by accident? Did you play a lot of games? Like, can you give me insight into your rank one climb? Yeah, that was a mistake, actually. Um, Majin told me that uh, if you just queued a bunch, that they would give you free money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I hit rank one, and I was like, where's my free money? And he was like, ah, sucker, <laughs> there's no money for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like, so I, um, I like racing up to Masters. Like, to me, that's fun because that's like a it's much like a tournament. I don't know. It's like a competition. It's something. It starts, it ends. Somebody wins, somebody loses. We get to talk about it later. Um, I like that. I'm a fan. I've done that before. Uh, I was a little sad that it didn't. I wanted to be the first one in the Masters was my goal. But so I was there at like 11 a.m. Pacific, like being like, hey, let's go. And then it didn't start till like five. Mm-hmm. And so I played like a little bit and then just went to bed and then got the next day. Played all day the next day and I made it one day. That was pretty cool um and it felt good that was actually the first time i've ever got rank one um which makes me feel bad because there's been about a million other times that i could have got it and i just chose not to (laughs) i would like get to masters being like second be like you know i would have 20 lp and they would have 30 lp or something could easily just like win one more and then i would just be like eh i don't know i made it this far i didn't care that much about like being rank one i was trying to race the masters but it kind of like irked me. It kind of annoyed me. And also just not finishing strong is something that I really hate. And so this time I was like, no, nah, we're going to, we're going to get there. Um, outside of that though, we were talking a little bit about this before the call. I am just not a huge fan of ladder. Um, and I want to delve into this with you because you were playing a lot of ladder right now because um, you were saying that if they stopped the ladder points right now if there's a cutoff you're most likely in the top three yeah for like world's qualification like if if they cut off things like literally right now like no more tournaments they don't let anyone else get any more ladder games in i think i'm like second or third as far as like qualifying for worlds um now as far as whether that's gonna you know stick around here and you know, a few weeks with the next couple of tournaments, we'll have to see. But like as of right now, I kind of have to care about ladder, which I'm gonna be honest with you, I fucking hate ladder. I hate grinding ladder. I hate I I just I just don't like it. I, it's just not me. It's super not me. So the fact that I'm trying to like fight against these people who've been grinding like thousands of games and they have three thousand LP and I'm like, come on, man. Can we just chill a little bit? Let me get my points. I just want to qualify for worlds. And and this is like insane because you're someone that like literally plays the game like for a living like this mm-hmm. is what you do 
right? And still you're like, I can't keep up with these guys. <laughs> these guys play too much for me who does it full time. I, I think that I do something where I play, you know, I try and play like a, a, a set amount of like quality games, you know, like I come in and I have like a, mm. you know, 70 to 76% win rate, like pretty consistently on ladder, you know, so like when I play, I climb. Um, but the thing is that like these people are playing like just thousands of games. They're just playing like so many more games than me. And like, I mean, uh, you know, it is what it is, but I... <laughs> I, I can't keep up, but I just, I need to just like buckle down and just play an ass load of games. Um, but yeah. Where are you on the ladder right now? So right now in standard, I am at like 1100 LP, 1200 LP, something like that. Um, Ooh. yeah. So you're like 50. Uh, no, that's like, that's like 30. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> I know. I was, I was joking, but is it 30? Something like that. I, I think when I checked, I was like 32 Jeez. or something. But uh, that's 32 wow. after, like, gaining, like, 200 LP, and that only brought me up, like, five ranks. It's, like, everyone's LP is just, like, absurdly inflated right now. Um, I, yeah, so so this th this brings me to my problem with LP. Like, this is not good. There's – anytime you have to be – what one, like, you're going to get burnt out, right? Like, this is – everyone's going to burn out playing too much ladder. And two, like, you, you really don't want to be playing the game when you're forced to. Because that leads to burnout. It just feels it feels bad when you want to play the game. You know, you know what I'm talking about when you want to play the game more than you want like water in a fucking desert. You know, when you want it so bad, you're just like, oh, I just want to play one more game. I love it, and you just want to play more games. That's the sweet spot. That's like boop, right, hit it, nailed it, perfect. When you're like, man, I really don't want to get up today and go to work or play Runeterra. Like that's not good. That is not where you want to be. And that's what it feels like to me trying to grab, grind the ladder. I'm like, I don't care about these games. They mean almost nothing to me. I'm literally just like working, <laughs> which is like the worst fucking feeling you want from your hobby. Well, you got to gamify it, right? You know, just like you gamified your like race to rank one race to masters. Like, you know, just have a race to one KLP or two KLP. I mean, or 10 KLP. 10K, apparently. Yeah. I think that, like, a, a big frustration point for me in this season is that, like, I don't know how much you guys have talked about, like, the MMR system and Masters. Um, oh, not at all. Really? <laughs> Zero. We haven't touched on it at crazy. all. That's crazy. It's no. super fun. Yeah, well, we, we were waiting for this Acadio guy to come last Bro, week. And, I, I uh, was ready to complain about it, too. I was going to talk about how everybody should FF100 games, because um, that's the only way to fix your fucking MMR. Don't do that, by the okay, way. Okay, so hold on. Let's right. Let's let's talk. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> we'll get into that. Let's let's finish. Let's finish our rant about ladder, and then we'll go into the MMR because I I got a lot. I want to talk to you about this because um, I haven't really talked about it that much because like yeah, that's a whole different that's a whole different thing. Let's talk about ladder in general. Um, to be clear, by yeah, the way, so I just I just need to get in there. Uh, Riot has confirmed that FFing 100 games is against TOS. You'll get banned for it. I, I, I at one point I would have suggested FFing 100 games because that would be very beneficial. I am just to be very clear, saying that you should not FF 100 games. I just I, I don't want Ruben yeah, to come will. in and be like, bro, are, are you telling people to? I'm just saying. You will you will get in trouble, and if anyone gets in trouble though, like Kato said it. Um, so, uh, yeah. So this is the problem, though. And like, I sympathize uh, with with Riot's position because it, it's tough to do, right? Because on the other hand, so right now, ladder sort of matters a lot, kind of. It's really weird, though. Like for someone like you, it matters a lot. But then there's people like Card Gamer who haven't played any ladder, so it matters for him too because he has twelve points from his win. But if you don't have time to actually like make it way up there, if you're not actually in the running. It's sort of like kind of who cares. Um, I'm a little bit the same. Like I would need to do really well at these eternal opens and then try to do some ladder grinding. So I'm just playing zero ladder right now. I went rank one and then I stopped. I didn't play for like a week. I'm going to do the eternal or do the eternal opens. And if I just bank some points, then I'll try my best to like climb up the eternal ladder at the very end. Yeah, um, I, I think that. I think that, like, there's a lot of good things about, like, the newer, like, rank system. Um, you know, it's a lot less punishing. You don't need to be, like, literally top 32. And once we start looking at, like, the actual world points you're getting from it, you know, the difference between getting, like, five points for top 10 and, like, three points from, like, top 100 or whatever isn't that big of a difference. Um, you know, most of the time you're going to, like, the points differential is going to come from, like, your tournament performance. Um that said, the current system significantly favors people who just play a lot of games with, like, mediocre win rates. 
um like like to an insane degree like i in previous seasons um we've had situations where you know like you have to have basically like a 66 plus percent win rate to climb at all and like realistically if you really want to climb as be 70 plus and you have to play like quite a few games but that's like super doable because like a everybody was living underneath the same system there was no you know play a thousand games and then you get like your lp cheat code um like it, everyone was under the same system and like it's really fucking hard to like just infinitely print lp um but the current system like just lets you print infinite lp because you can't lose lp at the top once you played x number of games you literally just can't lose lp um which is leading to okay. people just like you know hitting infinite lp okay okay so i so i don't even totally understand that i want to dive into it but again um my issue with the ladder is that one you do want it to matter mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't matter, it's, like, totally useless. Uh, but the way that it matters right now, I feel like, is not the way. I don't, I don't know. It's it's too... It, it leads to too much burnout. It leads to too much uh, players needing to play an unhealthy amount or more than they want to to qualify for Worlds. And it's, like, it's not good. It is not good. It definitely um, requires a lot of games. I, I think that, like, for, uh, you know, a, a slightly more casual player, like, literally anybody who doesn't care about Worlds points, I think that, like, current ladder system's, like, great. Um, but the thing is that, like, if you care about Worlds points and you care about, like, contending at the top, it's it's a pain. It's a pain. Yeah. And so that's the problem I have with, like, this isn't... This shouldn't be how you qualify for Worlds. It's like, hey, card gamer, do you get into Worlds? You, like, won a tournament with thousands of people that entered. Like, oh, no, you didn't because, like, Timmy over here, like, top 32, two of them, and then just played 10 million games on the ladder and got more points than you. Like, that's not a good system yeah. to me. I don't know. There's, there, it needs a tweak. That's all I'm saying. I, like, it needs some sort of tweaking. Uh, and then let's, okay, now let's go to the, the MMR thing. So what's the deal? After you get to a certain point, you can't lose LP. Okay, okay. So the way that the system works is that, Jesus. Okay, so here's what happened. Is that when we came into this new MMR system, um, if you've ever played a ranked season, like if you were playing like last season, you carried over MMR, um, which is basically like the system, you know, has like an idea in its head of like how good of a player you are. Um, and then, you know, when you play against somebody, it's like, are you better than this person? Oh, well, you if you're better then you were expected to win. So you're gonna get less LP. And if you lose, it's like, damn, we, I think you're better than this person. How would you lose? Uh, you're gonna lose infinitely more LP, right? Um, so that's how we end up okay. in like a plus 15 minus 28 situation, which is what the vast majority of okay. people on ladder are playing. Um, that's where I'm at. Yeah. So we're carrying yeah. over this MMR from the previous season. And the issue is that the, the MMR that we carried over just is not compatible with the current system. So what happens is that everybody's stuck at this plus 15 minus 28, even at like zero P because the game thinks that like, oh, you must be like really good at this game because you carried over this MMR. Um, and the only way to fix right. that is to play an assload of games and not just play an assload of games. You need to lose an assload of games. Um, you need to lose a lot of games so that the system thinks that you're worse. And when the system thinks you're worse, when you're playing against everybody else who has like this inflated MMR, then they'll be like, oh, oh, you, you won. I didn't expect you to win here. Have plus 22 LP, have plus 26 LP. And it, it, it's like, wait a second, wait a second. And when you lose, you only lose 15 because the system thinks you're bad anyway. So what's happening is that it, the people who played like, you know, thousands and thousands of games at like mediocre win rates, you know, we can talk about, you know, there's, I don't want to point out specific people, but there's people in EU that have been like riding the top of like ladder with like 55 to like 57% win rates, like all season, by just playing an aspect of games. What happens is that the system like evens out your MMR where um, you're just gaining more MMR and losing less, or gaining more LP and losing less LP than anybody that you're running into. Um... Just because it, the, the system doesn't care about your LP when it compares two people, yeah. right? Like, I can play against somebody who has 3,000 LP, and the system will still give me plus 15, minus 28. Because it... Explain explain what MMR is really quickly for anyone. MMR is just know. like the system thinks uh, that you uh, deserve to... The, the system thinks that you are, like, X good, right? Like, if you have high MMR, then the system thinks that you're really good. If you have low MMR, then the system thinks that you're, like, bad. And then that, like, should yeah, be changing, like, game to game. I don't know. I don't know where MMR comes. From. I forget what the, what the what that stands for. But it's the same as like an Elo rating. Yeah, it's just like a match like chess rating. or magic back in the day. It's just like a secret little number that like you have that dictates kind of how good you are. 
behind the scenes that you just don't know about it's just back there somewhere in the algorithm yeah so the big issue is that like your mmr will like fluctuate wildly in the current system you know if you played like a lot of games if you lost a lot of games then the system will think you know you know it will like tank your mmr um and then when you're playing against somebody um you would think that like your lp should like match your mmr right it's like oh well if you take a bunch of games does that mean you lose a ton of lp in the system like you know, so like even if there are like increased gains, surely, surely you can't actually climb with that because you, you know, you have to have lost a lot of games. And the issue is that the system isn't like updating your MMR to match your LP, right? So if you streak a little while, you gain a ton of LP, um, and then you lose a little bit, uh, the system no longer cares about um your LP, right? So like I've had a situation where I'm like 400 LP and I face like a rank one person at 1400 LP, and the system still thinks that uh, I'm better than them because of my MMR. Um, so it's like not taking LP into account at all, which leads to situations where if you're at like the top of ladder and you played like these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games, um, or just lost a lot of games, um, then your, then like your LP gains are like really sticky, which is to say that like, if you lose like 10 games in a row, you aren't losing like a ton of LP. You're losing just like a little bit of LP because the system like thinks like, oh, this person's like kind of bad. I want to give them like, you know, lower losses. Um, so, like, for instance, for me, if I if I go out and lose four games on ladder right now, I'm going to lose, like, 120 LP or some shit, right? Like, something crazy. It's, like, 116 or something. So, but, like, if, don't you if need somebody... Some absolutely insane win rate, then, to climb at, at like, minus... There's two ways to climb. Plus... You either okay. have, like, an absurd win rate over a lot of games. So, this is people like Drizoff. Um, hit rank one for quite a while uh, because he was climbing, you know, with like a ton of games and he had like the 75% win rate. The other way to climb is to just play a ton of games at a mediocre win rate because then the system like just changes your your LP gains so that you're then going like positive on LP, right? You know, uh, like I'm stuck at yeah. plus 15, minus 28. So you're at MMR, you're MMR so it's coming down and, and then you start going Yeah, down. and then like uh, the, the thing is like when you lose a ton of games at the top after you've like fixed your MMR, you won't actually lose LP. Like, if I, the amount of games that I have to lose, I have to, if I lose four games in a row, I lose like 112 or something, right? There's a lot of players in like top 25 that they would have to lose like 10 games in a row to uh, lose as much LP as like I do. Um, yeah. And then like their gains are so much better too, right? So it's so much harder for them to lose LP. And then they streak once, you know, maybe they, they go on a good streak and they go like, you know, 25 and 10 or something, right? Like that, that's okay. They climb a little bit. And then like, you know, if they start losing again, they don't lose that much LP. That's kind of like how the system is like creating this like infinite elo, um, infinite LP if you like keep playing because you just can't lose LP. You literally cannot is, lose LP. Is, yeah, so obviously this is dumb. It needs to be fixed. Um, this is one of the things that frustrates me though, because like I don't know, this stuff has kind of been done. You know, it's like the it's like the clock that we have. Like, have you heard of a chess clock? Have you heard of just each player having their own clock? Yeah. That's is that too much? So like on Magic, I don't know. Have you ever played Magic? A little bit. Okay, so they have the same thing. They have the same the same boop, 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 the same tiers, platinum, diamond, and then you get to their version of Masters, and uh, they have a rank. It's like the top. I want to say one thousand two hundred and fifty mm -hmm. players, and then after that, you become this weird percentage. So like you, when you drop out of the top twelve fifty, you become like ninety nine percent. 98 percent 97 percent and like you it's like kind of hard to climb back into you, you like you no longer are sort of working within the elo system or the mmr system it's literally just you have to win this many games kind of thing to get back uh and it's kind of tough it's actually like it's tougher to climb out of this into the top 1250 than it is in the top 1250 mm -hmm. and then they also have a decay so that, like, if you get to number one and you just sit there, like, you slowly start dropping points back down. Uh, and everyone does. Everyone's kind of dropping. Yeah. And so you're kind of, like, constantly kind of, like, jumping up and over each other. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems to work okay. <laughs> uh, no system's perfect, but, like... It sure as fuck beats what we have. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the system, like, has merits. And again, like, if, if you just don't care about, like, hitting top 10, then it's great. Because if you play a ton of games and you aren't usually, like, this 70-plus percent win rate person, then, like, your LP gains eventually are going to, like, even out. And, you know, instead of, like, hovering at 0 LP all season, you're going to get, like, 500 LP. And that's going to, like, feel pretty good. And, like, the gains are going to be a lot better. 
Um, I think that I think that's the problem. I think the problem is when people go to zero LP. Now, any of the LP that anytime they lose, it's just pushing LP into the system. Instead of like 15 comes from Akato and goes to Jason and we both move, uh, you know, up and down, it's people hit the bottom and then people just get like fire blasted up with LP pushing people up because you can't go down. Where like in the magic system, you can go below zero, basically. Sure. You go into these like percentages yeah. or, or whatever. Um, and then also a decay is, is interesting. Um I, I originally never liked a decay, like, because I, I don't know, it forces you to keep playing, which is also something I never wanted to really do. But again, our system's kind of so. I come from, weird. like, League of Legends, right? Where, like, in League of Legends, at the highest level, there's absolutely decay. Like, you have to be playing, like, you, you know, basically a game a day to not decay in Challenger. Uh-huh. Um, so, like, I'm used to decay. Um, but when we talk about like in LR specifically, we have a like much shorter seasons than like league. Um, but I, I, I think that really? it's a little bit harder to implement decay, uh, especially when we're talking about, you know, like being forced to play ladder, right. When we don't want to, or, you know, I mean, well, you're already, if you want to be at the top of ladder, you're already being forced to play a goddamn lot of ladder, a lot more than one game a day. Yeah. So I think decay would be like maybe would be better than that. It's not like forcing you to play as much as it is right now where everyone has to chase each other into thousands of LP. It is pretty crazy. I don't know if it would stop Drizzoth, that. like when he won the uh, world qualifier, um, like the next day or something, he hit 2K LP, right? This is what, like a week and a half ago? Um, and he was like 200 LP above second place. And it's like, yeah, knowing that he's rank one, you know, he's fucking amazing. Uh, but then, you know, I it, it's been like, what, a week and a half, two weeks, something like that um, since the world qualifier opened. Uh, he has been like just completely passed. Like rank one is now like three KLP. Like <laughs> I don't know. Man. Yeah, which which brings me to uh, my other thought about like after he won the world's qualifier, they asked him what he was most happy about about winning the world's qualifier. He was like not having to play ladder anymore. Like not having to fucking grind ladder. Like you don't want to play ladder. I don't want to play ladder. He doesn't want to play ladder. What am I, who's a notorious ladder grinder, doesn't want to play ladder? Lots of people don't want to be playing this much ladder. That's a problem. I think it's a big problem. And especially, like, for someone like me, I want to play the game a lot. I um, Like, when the Gauntlets came out, I played fucking every day. Every day I played my Gauntlet, which is just about every day. Mm. Um, loved it. Loved the grind towards the two buys. As soon as I got the two buys, stopped playing. Haven't played another Gauntlet since. Um, basically, haven't played the game except when I ran to rank one because that was something to do. And, again, like, stopped playing the game. And so, like, I think you're doing a bad job if your customers who desperately want to buy your product are like coming into your store and being like, not, nah, there's nothing. And like turning around and leaving. That's not good. That's like, that's you're, you're doing a, a bad job. And to be fair, this is a long time coming. We were on the uptick now. Like we were <laughs> at the point where all we had was standard ladder. That was it. That was all that existed. And there was a seasonals every two to three months and that was that was all now we have like two ladders we have daily gauntlets we have monthly tournaments things are much better but still they can continue they need to keep going on this track Um, and to be clear like i very much enjoy playing lor like i love playing this game Um, and i just hate grinding ladder specifically like i hate playing lor for reasons i don't want to or being forced to play the game when i don't want to I want to play for things that I care about. Okay. What 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 sort of a thing would you like to see that would like have you play LOR? Yeah, easy. Um, so the the progression track where you get the two buys, mm-hmm. right? Whatever that's called. Put some cool shit farther down that I can keep that I want to keep getting trophies for. Um, you know, unique unique little uh, what are they? They're not pets. They're guardians mm-hmm. right uh, you know make a make a freaking bubble gum colored um uh chip you know it's super easy to do for them to just reskin um some of these ones that they already have and then like all the way down at the end get get me like a a skin for a champion with a with a level up animation that i just like have to have i'll grind that shit hells yeah i play fortnite I don't even particularly like Fortnite that much. I just gotta get fucking Goku with the pink hair, bro. I just gotta like grind out this fucking like bunny costume with like the crazy like whatever. Um, 
they do a good Fortnite does a damn good job of like keeping you like grinding and wanting to like more quests and like all this stuff. Um, I think that's something that Runeterra needs to keep keep going with. I think having more incentives like, we, like definitely makes sense. You know, having some sort of like a progression track. Um, you know, I, I'll talk. Yeah, about, we're getting there. Yeah, I one thing that I've talked about before is like the region rewards. Do you remember those? I'm sure that you haven't had like a region reward progression in like. Oh years. yeah. Um, but like you know, it's like the track that like you know you pick your region and then like as you progress, you like get cards from it and you know shit like that. Yeah. Um. I know that I played when this when I first started playing this game so much more of this game because it's like oh fuck I'm so close to the next level so then I'll just like grind like out like another like fifteen or twenty games and it's like oh yeah um, that's okay so this is another thing I wanted to I was gonna write an article about this or whatever I want to talk about this it's so weird that like Runeterra is almost a victim of its own generosity so the fact that like I just have all the cards and a million shards and like all this stuff. Uh, like, I don't care about those quests that exist. I don't care about grinding those those rewards, whatever, because I already have all this stuff. But, like, in Magic, or let's let's go with Magic, uh, like, it's super predatory. It's so annoying. I want to I play a deck, but I'm missing, like, four rares. But you can't just buy rares or craft the rares. I have to buy, like, 50 packs or, like, 25 fucking packs or something, which costs, like, I don't know, $100.00 just to get like enough wild cards so I can craft these four um, and and play the deck that I want. And so most of the time I can't always play a deck that I want. There's like, I got like half the format or something. Um, yeah. And, but I love it though. I, but at the same time when I'm like, Oh, I got, go- Oh, I got, a- I got some gold cards. Yeah. I can, I can craft some rares. Finally. I'm so excited. So literally by being treated infinitely worse by Wizards of the Coast and them gouging me for money and me being unable to play the game, I'm somehow much more excited about like the things that I get because I'm finally able to play the game. How weird and dumb is that? It's literally like we have one parent that's like, here's just whatever you want. We'll give it all to you. And have another parent that's like, um, you know what? I'm going to give you a hug like once a week. You're like, I can't wait for that next hug. <laughs> like you like that parent more. I- like, what the fuck is wrong I, with And I us? think this is, like, the argument, though, is, you know, being pushed by, like, Snap, right? Like, Snap's monetization is the most predatory dog shit thing on the planet. It's terrible. Um, but a lot of people it's get, like, popular. addicted to the, the progression, right? Or to, like, you know, the little yeah. little drip feed. Um, it means something. Yeah, now. like, I'm not going to go on my Marvel Snap rant. I, I have one. I'm not going to. Um, but I, I do understand that. And I, I think that, like you know ideally lor could like do more to like actively incentivize you to like play have like some sort of a progression track i I think that like the current you know like rumble one is like a good step in the right direction but you're right like for for the people who are like grinding out uh the rumbles or whatever like they don't care about that champion wild card at the end like let's be honest with ourselves (laughs) for just like a second um yeah that said like if we're talking about like other incentives to play the game um, you know, you were talking about hating ladder, like being required to like qualify for worlds, but wouldn't that be like an incentive to like play the game? Wouldn't that be like right Here's up your thing. alley? You would think so, but there's, there's problems. One, if I'm rank one on the ladder, doesn't give me shit because I, I have to go do well in the tournaments. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's not incentive there until I've like done well in the tournaments, mm-hmm. you know? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fucking play three months of thousands of games of Runeterra just to like top sixty four one or two of them and not have enough points anyway. Like that's insane. That's psychotic. That's like a Cato level crazy. Um, jokes because you actually do well in them. Had I done well in the first one, and or the second one, well enough, then I would be. Then I would be on it. But currently, it's, it means nothing to me because it is nothing. I'm, I'm gonna get those points and not do anything. Uh, and then also we have the eternal ladder. So it's much easier to climb because there's not people with 3000 LP on it. And you only have one month to climb instead of three months of climbing. Like that system makes no sense, right? Why would I not just go climb that one for a month? Um, I, I, I think that there's like merit to talk about, you know, like, you know, people, more people will be grinding eternal because, you know, this is their, also their chance to get their, to get their month in and try. And I think get... there's a, I think there's a lot less people grinding. Eternal. Um, a lot maybe. less. Like I'm getting paired. I'm getting paired masters into like gold. Yeah, but that's that's bonds. because there's just like 
I, because we all well, started in iron, people. bro. You're still playing against Masters players. They just haven't hit Masters yet. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Um, um, I, it's also just one month of grinding compared to three months yeah. of grinding. I mean, I, I think that, like, okay, you know, you could talk about, like, not wanting to play ladder until you do well, you know, in the tournament to, like, justify playing ladder. But don't you think that, like, playing ladder, like, probably, you know, uh, would be beneficial or, like, pay some amount of dividends towards, like, doing well in the tournament? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's the other crux um, for someone like me and I think a lot of other people probably is that like, I don't have the time commitment. Like you're, you're talking about, you know, realistically to make talk like you play how much every day? How much ladder do you play on an average day? Five hours? Yeah, probably. I mean, I take some days right? off, but yeah, no, it's it's pretty. I, uh, five, I mean, five is not even that like you stream like more, you go like six hours sometimes, yeah. seven hours, right? So let's say let's say five hours a ladder, even if it's five days a week or six days a week. Yeah. I don't have that fucking time. I don't have thirty five hours to to give to the ladder to potentially give something like make something. I don't I don't have that time. It just doesn't exist. So what's the point of even trying? So I I don't because if you can't get there, there's it's it's moot. It's moot for someone like me. I could maybe get like top a hundred or something. Um, and then, so, you know, to do that, to give 30 plus hours of my time every single week to something and then get absolutely nothing for it at the end, there's no way, bro. There's just I mean, no you're getting the, way. you're getting the, the intangibles, right? You know, you're getting a, a better understanding of the game, a better understanding of the meta, a better understanding of decks, you know, like these are things that pay off eventually copium surely at some point. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, and I mean, you're not wrong. They, that would help me prepare for tournaments, but I could also just do anything else with my life for 30 plus hours yeah, a week. For sure. I, I'm an old man now, you know, like when I was young, I used to do that stuff too. But now I'm like, I, I got stuff to do, man. I got, I got fucking, I got lawns to mow. I got kids to feed. I got fucking, I, uh, houses to paint i think there's like a, a couple things porches to fix <laughs> porches to fix and paint sure. i mean i i yeah. think there's a couple things going on here like i i think that one of the big things is that um uh like ladder right now like again it's important if you want to qualify for worlds but like again the difference between getting five points versus getting like three points from ladder um, once you start looking at like the amount of points you're getting from like tournaments and stuff, it doesn't matter that much. It matters that you're getting points. It's just you Some don't points, need yeah. to get five. I don't think. I, I think that like three to four is like especially if especially if a lot of the people in the ten aren't like if they just don't count. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if they just didn't do get points in any of the tournaments or not enough. Yeah, you could look so at like, like it doesn't matter. You don't need I, five. You just need to like get enough to uh, more than your competition. If I open up a ladder right now. Like, I'm certain that, like, top 10, let's see, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of these top 10, I can say for certain, are not anywhere near, like, point qualification for Worlds. They're, they're nowhere fucking yeah. near. Um, and this is the thing, man. Also, if you can't compete against these people, what fucking chance do I have? Like, you know what I mean? I... I think that the, yeah, I think that the big thing is that, like, the current ladder system just, like, super incentivizes you to just grind a ton of games and, like, really rewards you for just grinding, like, a ton of games. And I think there's, like, some amount of a yeah. middle ground between, like, that and, like, the previous where, you know, it was, like, you know, you, you just have to have, like, a 70% win rate to climb. I think there's, like, probably some type of a middle ground in here. I know that Riot is like acknowledged that like there are MMR issues and like you know eventually there's going to be a fix to this. It's just that that's definitely not <laughs> that's not fixing it for this season, which means that we're still stuck you, in this season. What do you think about this? What if uh, instead of these points going to ladder, what if they went to the highest trophy earners? No, I maybe maybe before they made every single one unlimited, bro. I once they made. Oh, every get rid of fucking that rumble unlimited. Oh my god. Make, make them make them either best of three standard or best of three eternal only. Um that's all. I maybe. Maybe. I don't know. And then and then and then I'm not saying get rid of the fun formats. Have another queue that's like wanna have the fun format. And if you get to however many trophies, then you get like 
the super special twisted fate skin that doesn't exist yet because why i don't know um you know like there's have the have the funsy things prizes be with the funsy format and have the world's qualification be with the format that everyone actually wants to play and learn i mean at the end of the day i I think the incentivizing ladder play is like valuable i think that like we should probably want to play ladder ladder sucks with no incentives you can still put other uh, put other incentives there i would uh, for sure. Okay, we just we just need incentives on everything. Just a you know a carrot on a stick for every yeah. single queue. Okay, you do, and so I think this is the biggest problem that Riot. So Riot made League. Everyone just wants to play League, right? You don't need a fucking carrot really to play League, do you? I don't know. You tell me. People need like, do they need like a hey, like get the cool? Yeah, skin have you ever played League? League is whatever. a miserable experience. Have you seen me play League? No. I've not played a lot of league. The the majority of the player base of League of Legends only plays ranked to hit gold, so they get the cool skin at the end of the season. Oh really? Yeah. No, that's not true. It has a massive casual following. I like playing league just because it's fun. I like we we get together we get together with our like groups of LOR people that have like some people have played a lot, some people have never played, and like we have a good time just playing some league. You saying that you um, have a good just, time playing League tells me you haven't played very much League, and that's fine. Yeah, but no, for sure. I, I just everyone I hates tell. everyone hates on it so hard. I'm always like, I'm having a great time over here, guys. Look, look, I can, I can, like, I can make it rain with misfortune. Like you guys don't even know. It's so fun. Um, I think the vast majority of the player base for like League doesn't play ranked. Um, and if they do play ranked, they only play like ranked in like limited amounts to get like gold. Um, the vast majority of players just like. Play normals or play ARAMs, which is like, you know, our equivalent of like queuing normals, I guess. We don't really have like an ARAM one to one. Um, but yeah. Okay. Well, what I was getting at was that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're right. Because Magic's biggest audience is casual mm-hmm. as well, right? Like the kitchen countertop, whatever. Um, why doesn't that translate over into Runeterra? I guess it does. I guess, like, Path is supposed to be, like, the most popular... Have you seen, like, the stats on Path? Yeah, it was, like, 500,000 people apparently played that one week. Yeah, I played, like, during that one month, and it was just, like, this very specific, like, challenge mode or some shit, right? Like, I... And, like, how many people, you know, they like, within our circle, like, A, like, you know, maybe, like, vaguely knew that this Path thing was going on, but, like, didn't go and fucking participate. I had no idea. I didn't know. I had no idea it was even yeah, happening. Yeah, so like I still don't know what it was. Again, like you know, the the casual fan bases. I it's been talked about a million times, but like Path is like incredibly good for Legend of Runeterra as far as like you know getting people to like actually play the game Legend of Runeterra. Yeah, here's the thing though. Um, I know quite a few people that play Path. How how is them playing Path really doing anything? Like, does it monetize the game? Is it growing the game? Are they watching on Kato's YouTube channels? Are they watching seasonals? Are they telling their friends about it? Nah, it's like fucking like Candy Crush for them. They're just like, I don't know, playing the game and then moving on with their lives. Where does that help build the game? What you're saying is we need to monetize the path players yeah. harder. Yeah, they need to take they need to take a page from Marvel Snap and just start gatekeeping the crap out of every one of these abilities. Oh, you want you want uh you want your misfortune to cost one mana? That'll be two hundred gold. I think that's every every step of the way. I think way. that's kind of like I, I don't know. I, I don't like that's engage with path, but like don't tell there's me that. like don't tell me that's how there's it works. like a pretty there's big no way. grind aspect to path to like unlock like these like super. But you don't have to pay, do you? Uh you can pay. It's a pig people I, I, now i like it i have you seen like this the, is, okay let's let's talk about monetization let's talk about monetization for a second because i i'm giving i hate wizards of the coast i hate them they stole millions of dollars from the player base aka me mm-hmm. and majin and a bunch of other people they, they're super predatory they lie and they steal and they they send detectives to your house to take back their shit that happened look Based. it up um they just sent some Pinkerton people to some guy. Some guy got some product that he wasn't supposed to early and opened it up on YouTube. They sent fucking Pinkerton detectives to his house and they nicely asked for the product back. Um, but it happened. So anyways, long story short, I don't want to give them my money. I don't, this is a, this is not a good corporation. Uh, like this is like a let's, how do we suck more money out of our player base? Um, generally, there's good people that work there, whatever. 
Um, I'm talking about the corporate decisions. I don't want to give them my money as a corporation, but I do. I do, God damn it, because I love their game. I like it so much. It's so fun. And they've set it up in a really good, fun, enticing way. Riot, I actively want to give my money to. I want, I'm like, I'm just standing outside Riot headquarters, just fucking throwing money in the air. I'm like, who can I give it to? People are out there getting a fucking like hamburger or something, hitting them in the face with it. Ruben's like, the hell's going on? Um, and there's just not good ways for me to give them my money other than buying skins. I mean, which I think are I think are priced kind of ridiculously. Personally, I don't. Know, what do you What do you think about the skin pricing? Are they do they not seem a little expensive? I think skins are. I mean, I buy skins all the time. I I, I wish there were more skins. I, I wish there were infinitely more skins. I wish there were more. If they if they just cost like fifty percent less, I think I would buy a lot more. Of them. Um, maybe. I, I I think they're like pretty reasonable. I I think that like when we look at. Um, I don't know if you saw like the the thread that was going around about like how much it costs to like be competitive in like different card games. Um, and you saw like I saw that. Flesh and Blood was like twenty five hundred dollars. And you know, I think the, I think that I think that 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 I think that thing was kind of fucked up. So though. it was it was a comparison arena? based on like uh, getting like the top five decks or something. So it's like the average cost of like the top five decks but the point is just like a comparison mm -hmm. like it's not saying literally it's twenty five hundred dollars it's saying that in order to be competitive you know if you want like the top 500 decks or, or the top five decks like this is the price comparison the point that i'm getting at though is that like playing like physical card games is like super fucking expensive and even playing like online card games can be but legend of terror is like so Arena. good at just giving you literally everything for free um that yes but like this is like the league of legends model Right, where like League of Legends, like you can get like everything in the game, um, and the, the way that they're monetizing you is like through cosmetics. And the issue is that like it feels like LOR, right? Has solved free to play monetization. It has solved it. It's been solved. And then for LOR, it's like they just aren't pushing cosmetics. Like we are getting fewer boards. We're getting fewer um, uh, guardians. We're getting fewer skins. We get like barely any skins. I. It, it feels like. Dear God, Riot, just fucking milk us. Give us a little bit of milk something us. to buy. I mean, but this take is, my money. This conversation we've been having forever, right? Like, it'd be cool to have different card it's styles and like so animated weird. shit, and, like you know, made like you know, borderless or like different border shirts. Make all the boards clickable. I'll buy them all. Literally, anything. Like, well, why? Why would you make anything not clickable? Yeah. Dear God, I mean, I guess, I guess it's a coding thing for sure. No, just copy right? and paste, like, bro. Just be... copy and paste the Sentinel board. Copy and paste. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> or the KDA one. I also like yeah. the the KDA ones. That anything, just make it go like derp, derp, derp. The dumbest noise ever. I don't care. Just let me do it. Just let me click things and take my fucking. I've been button. using the top sixteen uh, board, and my biggest issue with it is that it's not clickable. Me too. So like, I'll I'll yep. like I'll be clicking it, and there's no. Feedback. I love the music. I love the music. No feedbacks. Fuck it. It's it's gonna get. It'll only last so long. Yeah. I've actually been playing with all the sounds off for like a very long time now. Uh, I have like just kind of weird. I have like like voice lines, and you know, like when you play a card, there's like you know, there's like noise or whatever. There's a little yeah. bit, but I have it pretty quiet, and I haven't had like music on in LR for like ever. I just listen to something else, you know. Um, yeah, I I would I would have all that stuff on if I was streaming, so everyone else can enjoy it or whatever. But like, yeah, I've just been kind of doing it on mute for so long now that I even kind of forgot about it. I sort of miss a lot of the voice lines and stuff. They're pretty funny. The voice it's lines it's are fun great. when you turn back on and then you get like a Draven fucking what the beep is that or whatever. <laughs> You're just like, ha ha, classic. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is worrisome. I So, you know, we went through some rough times in Runeterra. So, well, you know, the whole path fiasco thing, that that whole time right there where there was, do you know what I'm talking about? Like before path, we're waiting for that big announcement and they announced path 2.0 and they said that's what they were pivoting to. And then they announced that, don't worry, they're going to support both things. Nothing's going anywhere. And then three days later, they were like, just kidding. Fuck you, Path. You're gone. And then, like, that never even really happened. Path is still Yeah, around. Path is still getting, um, like, updates and, like, support and stuff. As it should. Well, yeah, it 100% um, should. I Path, again, like, is, is very popular with, like, people outside of our bubble, right? Like, the the majority of the yeah. people who open up the Legend of Terror app every day are playing Path. There's... Uh, there's some very it's it's strange it, and you know it's they've obviously had a lot of turnover there's been a lot of people that have come and gone like like a lot of people a, a lot not just at the top or in the middle but all in like in the doing the past stuff even on the peripherals 
the the communications guys are new. Doing a great job, by the way. Love you guys. Um, the person that handles LPP is like different. Um, just like a year over year, it's just different people. The people at that very head at the top, people uh, now Ruben's in charge of organized play. It's almost like just a whole different team of people. Like, you know, a lot of people are, are, have come and gone. And so that makes things tough. It's hard to judge the past when it's a new, when it's new people doing things now, you know, <clears throat> maybe like trying to, it's like trying to judge an American government from like 10 years ago or whatever, or like, you know, judge, like, like blaming the American government now for the shit that happened, like, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. It's like, it was different people sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll go there. Um, but I got to say, I'm a little concerned for some reason right now. Why is that? Um, like you're mentioning, because because things are finally being scaled down, that that worries me. Um, I mean, I I don't want to I don't want to doomer. I think that we're in like a great position right now, and I think that like the amount of like things seem that, like they're like, going. Yeah, I, I think that Riot's been, yeah. like, fucking killing it. I think that, like, the rework to, like, competitive play, like, overall is very positive. I think that having, like, daily gauntlets is, like, overall very positive. I think that, like, having, like, two queues and, like, you know, it, it seems like people are engaged with them. I think that's very good. I think there's a lot of, like, really good reasons to be playing LOR right now. And I think that, like, Riot's doing a really good job with that. Especially, you know, like, the tournaments are getting better. Like, remember the first open and, like, the last one was great. And, like, the next ones are going to be better. And it's going to be great. That said... LOR definitely is working on like a shoestring budget and then definitely isn't like getting a massive amount of support from like Capital R Riot. And I think that like Capital R Riot like kind of is, you know, expecting them to like make do with like limited resources. And I think that that's like pretty obvious. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think that like Riot currently, you know, like the LOR devs are amazing and are doing like a great job personally, I think, with like the current system. And like there's things that could be improved on. But like in general, I think LOR is great and like doing great. But I, I do. They're 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 not getting as much support as you know maybe I would like them to be. Yeah, and I totally agree. I agree with all those things. It seems like everything is on a massive uptick. Like I was saying, it was not long ago before all we had was standard ladder and a tournament every two to three months. That was it. And now we have so much more than that. So much cool shit that's happening also around. Even like the the, the winners going to that riot event and stuff. Like the worlds is actually shaping up to be insane like there's all this like kind of cool stuff that i really talked about like like the world champion gets like their own card or whatever right it's like design a card yeah isn't that what it is yeah not like worlds that's, that's and i think that like the cool. the change to like the world's format like qualifying for worlds i don't know how much you guys are like plugged into that but qualifying for worlds is really fucking hard but if you do qualify for yeah. worlds like you're in the top 64 players we're going instantly into like international like cross play Insta cross -charge. it's gonna be mm, it's gonna be so it's gonna be good. fucking crazy worlds is gonna be at such a high level of play i think i think it's gonna be amazing i think it's gonna be incredible yeah. again there are so many good things going on in lr right now yeah, no, totally agree. And for some reason, it's just, yeah, it's just the budget, I guess. Seeing the budget getting rolled back, like actually feeling the effects of it now. Because um, they talked about that before, but I guess we're starting to see it now. And like, I don't know, it just makes me feel bad. And I hope that, you know, I wondered, like, the Ruthless Rumbles, you know, them being mostly, like, good to buy coins. I bought coins for the first time in a while because I just wanted to play more Ruthless Rumbles. I was, I was curious, like, I wonder if that's been a moneymaker for them. I wonder how much, you know, they're, they could get through that. Um, and maybe that'll make them expand into other things uh, like that. Yeah. I, I, I think that, like, it, it feels like there's, you know, like, pretty obvious ways to, like, monetize LOR. Um, you know, whether it's through cosmetics or, like, more progression systems. Having, like, a battle pass, like, every single month. Having stuff like this, I think, would be, like, really beneficial. And, like, probably be a pretty good way of monetizing it. But, like, the fact that, like, you and I could come up with that, like, probably means that there's a reason they're not doing it. You know, maybe it's just a, like a lack of resources. Maybe there's something else. You know, I I I would assume that like given the ability to, you know, they would love to put out, you know, like 10 skins every patch and, you know, like three new boards and like three new guardians every single patch. And I would love that. I think that would be amazing. I mean, you know, at this point, just fucking port over the PNGs from like fucking league, bro. I, I'll take anything. But yeah, I, I it would be yeah. nice if there was more. It feels like a lack of support thing um, because, like, these seem like very obvious <clears throat> directions to go. It's, well, I mean, this is the thing. You're right. Because sometimes the community is like, why aren't you just doing this thing? Like, for instance, Cross Shard. 
Like, why don't you just bring Crossshard back? And they're like, well, you see, our coders literally couldn't make that work and everything will break if we do it. And we tried and we couldn't figure it out. So what do you want from us? Or like, you know, there's lots of things where like we don't know the, the inner workings behind the scenes. And there's lots of times people just need to be better at their fucking jobs. You know, I'm not saying it's Riot necessarily. Uh, I've been that person lots of times. I've worked at some games I just gave no fucks about. Didn't know how to play them. Didn't care about them. Didn't like them. And people in the community were constantly like, why are you guys doing this stuff? And I'm like, mm, it's probably some reason. Anyone, is it, why aren't we doing this thing? And everyone else looks around like, oh, do you, I don't know. That seems like a good idea. We should do geez, that. Do you think that that's the case at LOR? Why the fuck do we have the clock that we have? Like, if someone had just fucking asked any card player ever, like, is this a good clock? Could this be abused? I would immediately have been like, yeah, I'll be the fuck out of that in two fucking seconds. The number of things that... Okay, I'm Jason, wait, no, no, I'm number sorry. Of... Jason, do you know how the clock works? Yeah. Do you? Exactly how the clock works. Oh, mean? because you play so slowly yeah. that you go to clock every game. Know that? I see it all the time. <laughs> to be fair, I have not timed out once... Since it happened like two years ago, I I think that the vast majority of players literally don't know how the clock works, and like you know, I I think that well, it's really confusing for no reason. It's really not that confusing, and I think a lot of people complain about the clock. Once you know how it once you know how it works, it's not confusing, but it's nonsensical. It makes no fucking sense logically. I don't know, right? You're like you're like what's gonna like why why do you even have time going down in the first like your time is just gonna reset the next game because like, each of your what? actions are why? shorter jason yeah no i guess that's I, the thing bro sure. you're, you're but why, fucking, why but why your if, podcast if you, if you co-host told... lost games at worlds to the fucking timer because he lost he had less time in his fucking like per action right which means he didn't cast his spell which means he lost the game at worlds it didn't make it out of top 16 like this, it matters. Soon. Okay, it matters. I was there. I I had to watch that. That hurt me. Uh, it does matter. That's why you should just give us a good clock <laughs> to begin with. Anyways, um, this is the thing. Uh, so again, sorry, Riot. There's lots of you that are fucking awesome. Riot's a massive company, right? The people that work at Legends of Terror, like there's a hundred plus of them. I don't know how many of you guys are. Um, it's a lot of people, right? And so not everyone has all the same sort of knowledge and understanding. For instance, look at the people that were there before and are not there now. They thought that like going in these certain directions and making these sorts of decisions were the ones to make. And I would probably disagree. And they're not around anymore. Um, for instance, the the organized play system that we have right now, we could have had that two years ago or something much closer to it. Um, you know, when Seasonals first came out, it's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be five rounds. You have to win all five of them. If you lose one, you're out. Win all five of those, and you make day two. And if you win all of those rounds, you'll win the season. I'm pretty sure a lot of people could have told you this was not the best system. Didn't that you know didn't that last that for, like, literally dog like, shit? Two seasons. Two seasons. Two yeah. seasons. Yeah, and then they changed it after we were all like, "This is dog yeah. shit." But why would anyone need to tell you that? No one would ever need to tell you or I. Well, I think it was right? probably pretty bare bones, right? It's just like you know, let's just throw this in. Um, yeah, I just, you, you can make excuses for lots of things and you know what? Sometimes there's reasons for things. Sometimes there's timing issues. There's, there's lots of stuff the, this is what it, this is what it boils down to though. When I'm coming back to like, when I used to work at games, I didn't give a fuck about that sounds really harsh and stuff, but sometimes you're, you, you're there to work a job. So like a lot of the people that I originally talked to from the LOR team, they were league players and they loved league and they were fans of league and they wanted to work at riot games because of league and so can you imagine like if i went to go work at riot because i love legends I of the so much that. and then i, I couldn't imagine. and then i went to go and then i went to and then i went to go work on league of legends and everyone's like oh this sucks and that sucks and these other things suck and i'd be like i don't know i'm just here to like kind of tell everyone about the cool stuff that's coming down the plate i don't really understand your game or the issues that you have or like i kind of understand a little bit but i have a million different people yelling different opinions at me i don't really know who to talk to or like what's a big deal or like i don't understand the game at an intrinsic level from a player's perspective that is the majority of people that work at like any I, game i think that like a lot of uh communities have like very adversarial relationships with their dev team 
you know, they feel like the devs like aren't working with them and like are actively trying to make the game worse and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like I've played League of Legends. I've played PUBG. I've played, you know, a million different games before where like that's the case, you know, where it feels like people are like actively working against the best interests of like the player base. I don't think that's the case. with No, Baltimore. I think I think Blizzard. Oh, I think my cam froze. I think I think Blizzard has been well known for. Uh... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like the point that I'm getting at is that like every single interaction I've ever had with like an LOR dev or like somebody who works on LOR, they very much like care about the game um, and like very much are like um you know it, we're on the same fucking side right and i, I think that they want yes. like the game to be as good as we want it to be and i i i you know i can 100%. understand like you know other games like that's definitely the case and like maybe i'm giving Riot too much credit i don't know but in general i think that like at least everybody that i've interacted with is like very invested um you know and like maybe maybe yes. you with your specific lpp contacts you know you have specific people that you have a bone to pick with and you're like this person doesn't want to doesn't yeah. care about lor they want it to crash and burn I, <clears throat> I will say that everyone that i have you know and I, I spoke with a lot of the team when we ran um coverage for uh the world's open fantastic absolutely fantastic those people are uh through and through professionals they care very care very much they were you know up early stayed up late uh, uh some of them even over the weekend like through the night to, to do, you know, to, to put out fires and, and to help make sure the stream went smoothly and everything. Um, and I agree with you with all the, the devs and uh, even Dave uh, gives, has given me the time of day, you know, when I try to pick his brain on things and, and help us with stuff. Um, I totally agree. I think everyone that's working there right now is uh, very good at their job and, um, well, everyone else. Okay, Fleuron. And, I need, uh, and cares, and cares a I lot. need the inside scoop. There have been start dropping names. There have really. been some other. There have been some other people, however, <clears throat> who we don't need to throw. No, drop apparently. names, brother. Um, Come on, this is this is our scoop. This no, is no, no. this is the no, you know, no, put this no, at the beginning no. of the podcast. You know, and be like, these are the people who are ruining mm -hmm. Legend of Runeterra, and then people have to sit through. So here, start. Give me, give me a name. I am. Here's the thing. I think a lot of most of them that uh, I was like, what are you even doing here? I, they're not there anymore. So. <laughs> And to be fair, again, I'm not. There's nothing wrong with that. I was that person at many jobs. I just I was there to collect the paycheck. You know, I just did my I did my job, and I you know I didn't understand it that much, and uh, I wasn't super invested like I am in Runeterra or whatever, and and that's fine. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I guess I don't yeah, know. Maybe yeah. I'm too critical. <laughs> Anyways, um, so okay, I fucked this podcast up pretty badly. <laughs> we need to get to talk about like eternal and other stuff, and uh, I actually have to, I have to go. And we don't even have Majin. Um, I think we should do another one of these. Like we should do like two next week or something. So we even get one with Majin, in, um, and like talk about like the the tournament. Are you are you playing on Saturday? The Master Contender Open that everyone should go play in this Saturday. June the 3rd, 9 a.m. Pacific? Wow. 12 Saturday, June the 3rd, 9 a.m.? You mean that this will be, like, a great opportunity for me to go in and, like, try out my new Eternal lineup in, like, a competitive, you know, uh, environment? Sorry, you, you broke up there. Was that, did you say June 3rd, this Saturday, 9 a.m.? Was that, yeah, where you can uh, try out your decks uh, before the Open? <clears throat> then yes. Okay, well, yeah, in that case, I mean, I, I'm planning to. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent. I'll be there too. Um, <clears throat> okay, maybe we'll try and get a we'll maybe we'll try and get one of these in um, like early next week, like on, on the Monday or something, and and do a, a deep dive because uh, I think people are are getting unhappy with us that we're not talking enough about actual decks. They want to know what the decks are. They want to know what's good. They want to know what we think is good and uh, what we're playing and whatnot. And uh, Maj and I have just been doing much too much ranting yeah. about like other games I, and uh our general thoughts i believe stuff. it i mean i if, if people want the scoop i mean the new uh the new condensed riptide rex deck is broken as fuck i i'm telling you right now that shit is broken as fuck um other than that i mean just play good stuff I, i'm playing seraphine ezreal again it's a miracle i love it <laughs> i'm i'm i love seraphine bar uh i think i'm gonna play the targon version though because i want some fat cat action um yeah but you can play that one without seraphine you can play that one with victor Ooh. and aphelios and then you could run both in the ah. same lineup ah. aphelios kind of sucks right now that's my take i put a lot of aphelios 
Matt Pill gets the law of Velios. Crush him. Yeah, you think so? Well, my, yeah. I mean, especially versus a Seraphine, but um, just in general, like I, I feel like Aphelios is just not doing powerful enough stuff. Does really powerful things, and then kind of just dies. Doesn't close out the game. Can't just doesn't just fucking close out the game like a Seraphine does, um, or even a giant Victor or whatever. And then eventually your opponent does something stupid like a fucking Rex copied, and you're just like, uh, Moon Weapon? No, nope, guess I die. And that ends up happening. I find that that happens quite a bit. That's my take on Aphelios right now. If you want to play him as a one of or something. As like an addition, I think I think currently I'm running some crazy like triple Seraphine, one Victor, one Aphelios, one Ezreal list or something, which is obviously not great for a tournament setup. I think like because you're kiboshing a bunch of champions. I think like one Zoe, two Victor, three Aphelios is probably where I would go. But if you want to run Seraphine, mm -hmm. I think that's like super reasonable. Like I think that like there is a broken Seraphine deck. You know, you just pick which one you want to play. You know. Yeah, I'm on. So I'm on Seraphine Bar. Karma, set, and an X for for this weekend. I think, or I'm just gonna play the three good aggro decks in like Poppy X. Uh, I guess you go like what Ziggs. You go Ziggs Poppy or Poppy Lulu. I think is quite good. Um, the like Draven, Draven Scion, Scion, and what there was a third deck that popped up. So I think that was an aggro that was doing. Really I think well. Annie Jin. Oh, it was. The, have you seen this one? The, uh, I, don't, I don't like Annie Jin, if you like Annie Jin, but I was thinking about the, um, have you seen this one? It's uh, Katarina, no, not Katarina. What's her name? Tristana. It's Tristana Yordle Aggro, and then it has, um, what's the card that you throw units at their face? Atrocity. It has Atrocity. Uh, so it's like, the, it's like the old... Two Atrocity. Uh, it's like the old Tristana deck before they, like, it's the deck that caused Atrocity to go to slow speed for four weeks. That deck. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. It was it's number one uh, for win rate on the ladder for the last like three days or something. Really, I did not know yeah, that. I, mean, like I have not seen games that. or something. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I thought about those those three decks. I... Seems wait, wait, Poppy deck, Draven deck, that. Your favorite deck is back in the meta right now, and you're not playing it. Wait, wait what's my favorite deck? Thresh is oh yeah. Your well, it's not my deck favorite. Of all time. You know, it's oh, no, on. look, you know what? That's just not that's just Thresh and I, you know, we had a thing for a while, and sometimes you know the love just fades. You can't go back after a while. I've you know, I've got Seraphine in my heart now. Carmen and I got a thing on the side. Uh I don't know. Thresh and I have just fallen out, you know. I'm surprised you're actually playing Karma I, Eternal. I think Karma's like I think Karma's broken as fucking standard. I think that Karma's like pretty mid and eternal. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm doing a lot more of trying to just play the stuff that I like, <clears throat> that I think is good, hopefully, uh, and a lot less just playing what's actually good. Because <clears throat> I just need to enjoy the game more. That's fair. I just need to be, yeah. And and also, you just you end up doing a lot more winning when you play the stuff that you know well and you're having a good time. You know? I, I rolled into the Worlds Qualifier with like almost zero games on most of my decks in day two. Just because I played stuff that like I enjoyed and I liked and I kind of knew how to play. Bro, all I know is that every single time I like throw away my pride and just play decks I hate, whether that's like Pantheon or Karma or whatever, I top I, I top like these tournaments, you know? Yeah, that's because you hate like awesome decks and you like shit decks. Like you like fucking like what's that stupid 4-4 four -four deck that no one's ever won with? What's that stupid shelf? That card? Hey, you how fucking no, shelf? No, for decks? how long like, did I tell you guys cards? every single week on the podcast that TF Nami was broken as fuck? And you know what happened? Four months later, yeah. we had a tier zero TF Nami meta. Man, I knew, I knew. Okay, all right, you, you got one. You got one good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gotta wrap it up. Uh, Akira, thank you so much for filling in for Majin. Uh, he actually messaged us. He's alive. He was just sick. Uh, next week, hopefully, we'll get all three of us on here. And uh, we'll jump into some eternal decks for you guys. All right, we got to go. Take care. Peace. I think you got to give less fucks. Or at least I do. You think so? You got to manage your fucks. Yeah, it's very important. Um, you can't just be giving them out willy-nilly. It's like, you get a fuck. You get a fuck. It's like, nah, it's like, I don't I don't give a fuck about all that stuff. You got, like, friends and family, a passion. Everything else can, like fuck off basically you have to pace yourself you know you can't spread yourself too thin that's right yeah
Can you imagine somebody not showing up to one of these, especially I, when it was planned like so far ahead? I mean, I honestly can't. I don't know how you'd possibly let that happen. Yeah, no, that would be that'd be crazy. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> unimaginable you know we'll, we'll have quite a bit of chocolate you hit rank one i that's right i mean it's it's impressive that you you know were able to keep that many games I, I didn't think you uh knew how to open this game up on your uh yeah no i had to get someone to help me i didn't actually do any of the oh, that yeah, yeah. i just I, I i got chat gpt actually just to play my games for